What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm the Kawasaki Crusader and today we're going to be doing fairings on a 2008-2009 ZX-10R. Now, 2008, 9, and 10 ZX-10R are the Gen 3 ZX-10s. So the third generation of this bike is all three 08, 09, and 2010. However, the fairings are different on a 2008 and 9 than they are on a 2010, slightly. Uh, before I get into this, I will go ahead and explain that. To give you an idea of what's different between the, the 2008 and 9s versus the 10s, I'm gonna show you right here. So you can see that this line comes all the way down and this green is separate from this black. It's because this is a piece this is a piece and this is a piece so you can see there's a seam they actually and they connect somehow and this piece is actually solid one piece of plastic that's a separate piece of plastic but this is not anyhow that's a a little bit different than it is on my bike because on my bike this is just one piece that the head piece is one this is a uh, separate piece underneath this is a piece and then i also noticed that there's a screw here and a screw here on the 2008 and 9 zx10s see there's a screw here there's a screw here it's not like that on my bike. That's all part of the fairing. One piece. So there are gonna be some differences, but um, what, that's what we're gonna work on today is getting all of these fairings off and then all of these fairings on. And uh, the owner went with a recreation of the winter edition fairing. Anyhow, we're going to get started, guys. So I'm going to get the seats out of the way. I don't know if I can put it on a back stand because there's only one spool. I don't know if that happened in a sense is accident or not. But I'll let you know what I do as I go, guys. Don't worry. It'll be a step-by-step -step process. Okay, so I was able to get the bike on stands. I, he did have a spool on one side and I let him borrow a spool on the other. I'll be pulling that off. You guys remind me. I like the look of it with no sprocket cover. That's pretty cool. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start getting all the fairings off. So I don't wanna waste a lot of time. I'm gonna go ahead and get to tearing into this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and start with taking off the ferris that's closest to the ground, the easiest one to get to. I'm gonna take that one off uh, and the triangles off. So these are four millimeter bolts. I'm gonna use my T handles again. Oh, wait a minute, what is that? Just everybody knows, it was like that. I didn't do that. Good thing we've got the camera. So I undid that bolt. That one was already missing. And I undid that bolt. And I can already tell it's just gonna come right off. It's got these little plastic tabs. If you look, they kind of angle a little bit. They set in and hold themselves in place. Pretty nice little piece. Next, we're gonna undo this bolt, these bolts, that zip tie, and uh, that piece will come off. Then we're gonna come over to this side. We're gonna undo this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. This one, that zip tie will already be undone and they didn't put anything in the bottom down there. So I'll f find something for him. Get that off. I'm gonna get started, guys. Okay, guys, so I got those three bolts out and I popped the zip tie off the front. But whenever I went to get this guy out, it was stripped. I tried to get it out, it didn't work. Tried to make the whole, it was a four millimeter. I tried to go to a four and a half and it wouldn't take it. So that one I'm gonna have to drill out and get out with an easy out. It's 
spraying it down with a little bit of chain lube. I don't have any cutting oil. Just wanna to try to go straight into the center of the bowl. All right, so drill a tunnel and you take something with left-handed threads, preferably an easy out. Sweet, it's coming out. Now that we got that stripped bolt out, Get this off. There's these little clips. And they kind of interlace with each other, so be careful. There's that piece. We're gonna get our four. We're gonna undo this bolt, this one, this one. This one, which was stripped out on the other side. And these three. Okay, I took the bolts out. So now we're going to gently remove the triangle. Gently same thing, more clips. But we gotta undo this. Okay, another strange difference between the 2008 and 9 ZX10R fairings versus 2010s. These little pieces here, you can see on this bike, they just kinda stop, leaving this little open area. On mine, there's the screw. And then this is the plastic piece. Mine continues up and runs up and connects to the windscreen. The next step, you gotta get these plastic body pins out. It looks like somebody's had them out and didn't put them back in all the way. At least they've had two of them out. But you gotta take those out and uh, you can see they kind of separate when you do. Also guys, on these little black clips, or pins, body pins, whatever you want to call them. You don't have to destroy them to get them out. If you take something thin, you can actually push the center of them in. There's a little button in the center. Then you can use a flathead screwdriver to pry up on the edges. So I already pushed this one in with the Allen key. But whenever you do that, it comes right out. So there I pushed the little button in the center in. And easily pulled the entire thing out and it's still reusable. Uh, that's kind of a pain to do with one hand. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down, but I'm going to uh, start taking out these four millimeter bolts. And then I think there's, t I think it's 10 millimeter on these guys here. 10 millimeter and I think this is also a 10 millimeter so uh, I don't know if I have to undo that on this bike I think that might just be for the headlights actually but anyhow that's what I'm gonna do guys all right all I've done is taken out the fairing bolts that run around the windscreen you can see that they've been over tightened a little bit I assume that's what the cracking around the holes are from, but remove those. Forgot about this one over here altogether. Okay, guys, so um, next you're going to want to take these 10 millimeter bolts out from the mirror. 
All right, so I went ahead and undid the bolts for the mirror, but they're actually, since they have integrated turn signals in them, they're connected via wire also, and it's a pretty short wire, and it's tucked in behind this. So we're gonna go ahead and push the little button in. Just lift it up a little. There you go. Let me do that one more time. Push the little button in. Lift up. Okay, so I took those little plastic pieces out and I realized that uh, you just have to be gentle, but these little rubber threaded boot things, I don't know what you want to call it, but they set inside this piece of plastic. So you gotta be gentle, but you pop them out. All right, so some of those come out a little easier than others, but that's what we're trying to get to. This is where the turn signals plug in, guys. So just gotta unplug them with these little clips. It's like you just either. I can't do it with one hand, but you undo those two clips. Okay, so you press on this, pull that out. It's very difficult to do, probably can't do it with just your fingers. Anyhow, then you can move them out of the way. Pull the mirror straight off. Same thing with the other one. Pulls right off now. The next step actually is just to get, remove this. There's actually, if you grab it in about the middle, about here, you can just pull it. As long as you already have these screws undone like I showed you, they'll come right off. It's just one of these little rubber grommets and there's a plastic spike on the inside of the fairings that go into it. Now that opens it up quite a bit. And you can see right here, there's a little 10 millimeter bolt that holds the fairing on. There's another one on that side, so we're actually gonna undo those. Okay, so I removed the bolt that goes there and it clearly freed up this whole side piece quite a bit. It's all fragile, guys. It's all just plastic. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and come over to the other side over here and take that bolt out right there. We're gonna try to undo bolt next. There's one there. There's another one right there. So we're gonna undo those next. So we've got that bolt out on each side. And I believe that it'll come off in one piece now. Oh, it would if I had undone all the stuff for the wiring loom. It looks like the fairings are undone, but I have to unbutton the wires from it on the brake side. So there's like these little rubber deals. And of course, they're not super easy to do one-handed. So make sure you don't break those guys. That's all I'm saying. You'll figure it out. Okay, so I just wedged a flat tip in between there and popped it out very slowly. And now, It looks like I was right. They do come right off now. So these aren't that bad to take off. So now we've got this naked bike. We'll have to take this off next. Yeah, this 10 millimeter bolt here normally has a reflector in there. If yours still has the reflector, you can just unscrew it. I think this is a five millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and it was already missing on this side. I didn't take that one out. Anyhow. Now we gotta undo these deals for the brake lines. Okay, we got those little clips off with some needle nose pliers. Losing power there. So guys, after you remove this little four millimeter Allen bolt, there is very, very strong 
Velcro. I hope you can see the Velcro on camera, but it's down there. And the best thing to do is use a flathead screwdriver so that you're not putting so much stress on the plastic and wedge it between those two pieces of Velcro to get it started without scratching any of your paint. And then it should come right off. And actually, it shouldn't pop off like it did, but a local shop actually broke the fairing piece right there. I knew that about this bike. Let's get the... Okay, so there's the Velcro. And then you can see right here, there's a little, yes, there's a little green circle with that little spike. Be careful with that. All right, after that, you're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and get the seat bolts. Seat comes right off. What we're gonna do next is carefully, we are going to undo these screws and remove this piece, which is still in good function, this piece and this piece. All right, so I removed four bolts. Now this slides upward like that. Be careful, those are fragile. So next we're gonna pull this out. You can see there's another one of those little fragile spikes. All right, I'm gonna do this with two hands, so I'm gonna put the camera down. Didn't break it. Same thing over here. Still didn't break it. All right, now we've got the tail taken apart. Next thing we're gonna remove is this bolt. There's one back there. There's actually one more screw for the tire hugger. It's right here on the side of the swing arm. There we go. the old dirty tire hugger off. We really, really have a different looking bike here now. I guess now it's really time to send the owner some pics and uh, start putting new fairings on. So now that we've got the tire hugger off, I think we are gonna go ahead and remove all of the plastic around the rest of the tail section. But what I'm wanting to do is find all the pieces and kind of get them in order. They didn't send a rear tire hugger. They do send a, uh, from NT, a little bit of heat shield. I highly recommend using the heat shield that they send. We're gonna get started putting this sucker together. Looks like, really, it's not gonna be too bad. Some Phillips screws. There's screws here and here and down here to hold it all together and even to hold this little bracket in to mount this side piece on. So, ready? All right, so I got this thing all set up, ready to build. We're gonna start taking stuff off of this and putting it on those pieces. Starting with this little bracket, these clips, the screws, all that's gotta come off. This bracket here, it's all gonna migrate over to those pieces. So that's what we're gonna start on now. All right, so I started taking the screws out and the clips off and it kind of came apart as I expected it to, but I wish I would have had a, like a head cam on or something so you could have seen. But once I took these screws out down here and everything else that you've seen, this just really just comes off. It, it goes together with little clips, you know, where it holds in place. So I've already got these two put in here. This bracket's solid, it's in place. What you'll see, is that you've got these little 
plastic towers and they're not threaded. This one right here is not threaded. And that's where this goes. That's where this little bracket goes. This holds your wires. This holds part of your fangs. It's important that that goes on and it's gotta be sturdy. So these are the screws that hold those on. You can see they cut. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set it on here and barely start it with my fingers and make sure that it's straight. And then I'm gonna take this drill that is already turned all the way down to one. I'm not gonna go that, I'm not going no full throttle. I'm gonna go just very light like that with a lot of pressure. But like this. And we don't wanna go all the way down, but almost. See, I've left a little bit. We're gonna slowly back this out. And now, put our screws back and we can start them with our fingers and then tighten it down the rest of the way manually with a screwdriver. So that's what I'm doing. So one thing I did notice while going through and putting all the brackets and such on is that there's no hole drilled right there and there's supposed to be. Not a big deal. But that's something you will find with aftermarket fairings and you just gotta be careful whenever you're tapping through something that ha does not have a hole and is supposed to. Looks like we got a few of them. So no big deal. These are ABS injection mold fairings and sometimes they just forget to weed out some of the holes. The first thing you wanna do is take these pieces and slide them together like this. And then you put a screw in right there and that'll hold this piece together. I've actually already done that right here. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put that screw in down there and fit these pieces in like you're supposed to. They kind of snap together as they came apart. Now, something that I just found on these NT fairings is that they didn't cut the little piece out that goes into the slots on here. It's actually supposed to look like that. So they didn't cut out all this plastic that's around it. So I have to do that, which is okay. I'll do it. Just gotta be gentle and careful and use precision tools. I've got this screw in still. And this plastic bonnet piece tucks nicely into this. You know, we're still working on these little cutouts on this piece, but they were not bad on this side. I had to clean them up a little bit, but they snap in there and there, and that holds it pretty steady once you get this bonnet piece snapped in. But the next thing to do is to line up this and get this screw in. Okay, so I got that screw in and that screw in. Then I put this screw in and now it's pretty sturdy on the right side. Now we can put one of these body pins in. Now I put the body pin in. Another one goes there, but I just kind of wanted to sturdy it. Well, I got the main portion of it put together. I didn't put these last two little body pins in yet, but I will. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. So on the inside, we started down there. Then we did these. This is where those little spots there were that weren't cut out. I just had to file them. That screw there really kind of holds it together. These little notches Kind of set that all up. We're ready for these last little plastic body pins and we can put this back on the front. All right, next we're gonna replace this piece with this piece. The way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna undo these three Phillips screws on the bottom. It's gonna take this bracket off and then you're also gonna unplug this for your speedometer. So after you unplug that and take the three screws out, it's got these three little rods there they pull right out of those little holes and you've got the bracket out 
and then you gotta move this little piece on over to this guy i got that put back on now we're going to plug the speedometer back in and mount it back up then we're going to put the front fairing so i went ahead and put that little silver screw back in on each side right there and right there and i also plugged in the speedometer first before i did that but that leaves it floppy and open so i can plug in the turn signals and side fairing piece over there on okay so i went ahead and put that little silver screw back in on each side right there and right there and i also plugged in the speedometer first before i did that but that leaves it floppy and open so i can plug in the turn signals so the first thing i did was set some foam down on the tire just in case this assembly kind of came down on top of it i didn't want to scuff up the man's brand new fairings then after that i came over here and realized that this bracket was not where it belonged so i put it where it belongs because there's this plastic spike coming out of this fairing and i plugged it into there because that's what that bracket's for it's a mount for the fairing so i've got that there you can see there's this big gap at the bottom of the headlights well it's not going to stay there you will resolve that by putting in these fairing bolts here and that actually will pull the fairing closer to the headlight. You can also see the same thing there. And that's exactly what we're gonna do next. Well, I completely forgot about the mirrors and the turn signals, and I had this thing put all the way back together, so I had to pop it up so that I can plug everything in under there. So don't forget that. Got to plug in your turn signals. I fed the wire through for the turn signal and put the 10 millimeter nuts on. I haven't tightened it all the way down yet. I also plugged in the turn signals and put them underneath their little wire clip. They're good. So now I'm going to put this back where it goes. Get these two plastic body pins in and these four well nuts put in. and get the windscreen put on. Bearings are on this portion of the bike. I got this all put together. It's ready for the windscreen. The turn signals and lights are sturdy, but I am gonna go ahead now and put on the front tire fender. So it's just those two 10 millimeters at the top. And I think it was a five millimeter Allen screw at the bottom but there was only one, we were missing one on the other side. So we're gonna get started on that now. So now we've got the front fender on. I went ahead and replaced that bolt with another one that I had laying around since he was missing one. The next step I'm gonna take, I was gonna put the windscreen on. I'll do that probably last, but now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. And if you remember, it was just three, four millimeter bolts. But we were, I think we were missing one, if I'm not mistaken, but I will have a, re I'll have a replacement for that as well. Now we're going to go ahead and put the triangular pieces on. All right, we got the triangle put on. So I actually did this piece, or this screw first, because that was the easiest one to get hinged together. So I put that screw in, and I didn't tighten it all the way until I got this one in and those hinges started. Tighten that one about 90%, that one all the way, that one the rest of the way, then I put that screw in. And also, I didn't forget about that little rubber grommet onto the uh, mount that comes off the stator cover. That's all put on there like it's supposed to be. So next, we're gonna put in this little filler piece I got this little piece put on. Everything is very sturdy on this side. I got the triangle bolted all the way down. We're ready to put the last side fairing on this side, but I need to put together this side still. So we're gonna do the triangle and then we'll uh, start to do the belly portion, which are those pieces over here. I think we've just got, yeah, two pieces left. And then we can do the, well, I guess we still need to do the tail. Got to put that back together. We're going to take this triangle and it's going to go here, here, and down here. That's what we're going to do now. I got this little piece put on. Everything is very sturdy on this side. I got the triangle bolted all the way down. We're ready to put the last side fairing on this side. I need to put together this side still. So we're going to do the triangle and then we'll uh, start to do the belly portion, which are those pieces over here. I think we've just got two pieces left. 
and then we can do the well i guess we still need to do the tail gotta put that back together we're gonna take this triangle and it's gonna go here here and down here that's what we're gonna do now all right so we got the triangular piece on after that we took the bottom fairing and latched it it kind of hinges right here looped it over put that bolt in to hold it in place put these three screws in to tighten it down hold it snug to its other piece the next thing that we've got to do is right down here just gotta get some of those plastic body pins put those together and put the windscreen on and after that got to do this tail section again and that's it next thing we're going to do is start to put the tail on so this has a little spike plugs on into this little rubber hole Just like that. Then you gotta take these little four millimeter screws and put them through the holes and make sure that, you know, you line up everything and snap it all where it goes. You wanna be real careful with this part. If you break that off, your fairings will never look right. So actually before you stick that in there, you wanna get this right. So you get that right and then snap that in make sure these holes line up and make sure everything down here is good to go it's not see got to make sure that this little thing goes underneath and kind of see how it's supposed to go so i'm gonna do it it's hard to do it with one hand all right we've got the tail done you can see you can see there's a little bit of a gap there because we haven't put in those little plastic body pins to hold that part down but the whole tail is on now other than this piece that goes here you can remember and disassembly i was saying that these clips often get broken off so just be careful whenever you're putting it on to make sure that you don't break them and also these holes were supposed to be pre-tapped and weren't so you'll have to tap them yourself all right so there's two little teeth that catch into little holes that are cut into this slide those in put your fairing screws in bolt it down it's solid do a little test fit with the seat Last but not least is the triangles on the sides. That's it. All right, so got the little screw in there. The little spike is in the rubber grommet. I did not transplant the Velcro. So thank you guys again for tuning into the channel. I know that whenever I first started getting into motorcycling, uh, changing my bearings was something I really wanted to do, but didn't understand quite how to do it. It is one big fragile jigsaw puzzle. So in one Saturday, if you've seen me transform my friend's bike from green to black, and turn my garage into a mess so thank you guys for tuning in and checking it out i appreciate you so much for your views your time i'm gonna go ahead and clean up my shop pick up all these spare parts you guys do me a favor though ride safe keep the shiny side up